This is the Jakumi sound. And at best, it was previously a forgettable shoe in the Adidas running lineup. But this year, it's got upgrades. So is the Takumi Sen 8 finally a noteworthy shoe? It's time to lace up these shoes and take them for a run. Today's workout was 10 times three minutes at 5K pace with two and a half minute recovery jogs. Basically a modified Yasuo 800 workout or a Yasuo 800 workout, how I like to do them when I'm doing them on the road rather than on the track with a total of 13.87 miles for the day. A great way to take the Takumi Sen 8 for a first run. Now, before I give my thoughts on this shoe after just this first run, I do want to go over some disclosures. I'm going to talk about this shoe and a bunch of shoes in the Adidas lineup today, but all of these shoes were shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent them to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to use any of these shoes, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Takumi Sen First, let's go over some specs. This is a 33 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel with a six millimeter drop, giving us 27 millimeters of Light Strike Pro in the midsole. And what they've done here, in addition to that Light Strike Pro, is they've given us energy rods, which is Adidas's take on the carbon fiber plate. Instead of one single plate, they have metatarsal rods that line up with the bones of the foot. They've also done a lot of sculpting with this Takumi Sen 8, trying to take as much weight out of the shoe as possible. And so here you could see the energy rods with this scallop that they've taken out and they've even taken a little notch over here out by the pinky toe which i'm not really sure what that does or how much weight that even saves maybe it helps the shoe bend a little bit easier on the outsole we have lots of continental rubber which i was initially quite surprised at and the shape of this outsole is a little bit i think unusual and different when you're looking at it from the outsole just by itself i think that it doesn't look that weird but when you compare it to some of the other shoes in the adidas lineup like the adios pro 2 you'll notice that the Takumi Sen 8 is a lot kind of like flatter uh, on the outside. It's not as sculpted and curved around as it gets from your pinky toe back to the outer part of your heel. It's just kind of like a straight shot. And it seems like the rubber is shaped a little bit differently as well with this kind of forefoot rubber extending further back with a little gap coming right at the heel. Whereas on a lot of the other shoes in the Adidas Adios lineup, that forefoot rubber kind of stays in the forefoot and the gap in the rubber between the front and the back of the shoe stays more towards the center of your foot. On the upper, we have a very thin, very breathable upper. It's literally see-through in certain parts and it's made out of 50% recycled materials. In the heel, there's almost no structure at all. It's extremely floppy, which is exactly how I like my racing shoes. For the tongue, there is a very thin, floppy piece of material, which has been something we've seen in all the premier super shoes in the adidas lineup lately i love how thin and out of the way that they get but they are a bit difficult to put on and that's something that i've noticed in all the shoes once you kind of get them on and fidget with them a little bit to get them to sit correctly then they stay in place and you don't have to worry about them for a second after that. Altogether, the weight savings that they put into the Takumi Sen 8 have definitely paid off because this shoe comes in at a stated weight of 6.5 ounces or 184 grams. So with those specs out of the way, what is it like to run in this shoe? Now, I think this shoe is a 5K, 10K racer. And at those kinds of paces, this shoe is absolutely phenomenal. I had such a fun time doing this workout today. Fun maybe is not the right word. This workout is always pretty grueling whenever I do it, but I enjoyed it to the extent that one can enjoy a Yasuo 800 workout. I really enjoyed it while running in the Takumi Sen 8. The shoe rises to the occasion and it feels fantastic to run it. There is a lovely springiness to the Light Strike Pro when it's at this thickness that I wasn't quite expecting. I was thinking that, okay, maybe it's just gonna be a little bit less interesting than the Adios Pro 2, which has a little bit more stack height in the forefront foot, but overall a relatively similar setup. It's more than just a difference in stack height that I'm feeling in this shoe. The way that the Light Strike Pro 
seems to respond to those harder efforts definitely set these two shoes apart. I didn't feel like I really had to pound the ground in order to get moving for these 5K pace repetitions. I just felt like I was able to dance along the pavement really smoothly as I was going through those reps. Because it's relatively lower in stack height compared to the other Light Strike Pro Super Shoes in the Adidas lineup right now, this shoe does pretty well in the corners. I felt very secure in all of the turns that I had to make along my route today. In terms of overall fit, I think the shoe fits a little bit long. It in fact reminds me a lot of the Audio 6 in terms of the way it fits and the way it kind of like looks and feels on your foot. It just feels like unnecessarily long for some reason, but in terms of the way it fits the width of the shoe, I feel like my regular size nine was the right size to go with for this Takumi Sen 8. I felt like the fit was just right in terms of how snug it is, in terms of me wanting to get that lockdown racer feel and how much room it had so that my toes weren't getting crunched. The one thing that I will say is like a lot of racing shoes that are out there, it gets really narrow in the arch. One of the areas where they try to not only I think save weight, but also make it so it's easier to bend the shoe and compress these rods is to take out a lot of the material in the middle of the foot. And what that ended up doing is making the, the arch portion of the shoe extremely narrow. So I do think that while the shoe is pretty stable as far as a racing shoe goes, if you are prone to really crashing in on some of these super shoes, this is one that you might experience experience that as well. But it quite possibly may be one of the best implementations of Light Strike Pro that Adidas has put together. I just feel like the combination of the foam and the energy rods works seamlessly together. I don't ever feel like I'm getting a lot of foam or a lot of carbon. I feel like I'm getting one system that works really well together, has a lot of great harmony to it. So I was really impressed with how this shoe felt in terms of its road manners at these 5K efforts, which basically feels like an all out effort as far as I'm concerned. The one other thing that I did note was that towards the end of my run today by like repetition number eight or maybe number nine, I did start feeling like I was getting a little bit of a blister developing right in the part between like the edge of my arch and the bottom of the pad of my foot over here. And I think that whenever that typically happens in a brand new shoe for me, a lot of times it's just a matter of like the insole uh, needing to get a little bit worn down a little bit. Usually it's just a break-in issue. Uh, so I'm hoping that that's going to go away after maybe one or two more runs in this shoe, but hit that subscribe button so that way you can see when I make update videos about it in case that situation doesn't improve. Otherwise, I feel like this is a fantastic trainer for those 5K, 10Ks. Maybe I could race it up to a half marathon in distance, but I'm not sure because there isn't quite as much stack height as in the Adios Pro 2 that I would like to run anything longer than maybe a 10 mile race in the Takumi Sen 8. And I really think that's where this shoe is targeted. So in terms of who this shoe is for, I don't think that this is for the marathoners out there. There. The person that this shoe is for is that person that has looked at the Adios Pro 2 and just said, that's too big. That's too heavy. I don't race marathons. I don't even race half marathons. I do 5K, 10Ks. The longest I might race is a 10 mile. That person who has been not ignored, but whose interest may not have been fully addressed in the past couple of years of the carbon super shoe battles. This is the year where you guys are going to start getting shoes for you guys. I know there's been a couple of shoes that have kind of fit into that category over the past couple of years, but this year the action's really gonna heat up and the Takumi Sen 8 is definitely one of those shoes that you should be looking at for your racing. And when it comes to training, there's a couple of ways that you can pair it up. I think if your race shoe is the Takumi Sen 8, then I think that your trainer in the Adidas lineup is going to be the Boston 10. The Boston 10 is a shoe that for me, at paces slower than 5K, 10K efforts, I don't love it, but once you start really picking up the pace, then the firmness of this shoe really starts to loosen up and soften up and it becomes a great 5K, 10K trainer. And that's when I like it. That's a really good way to put those two together. But the other way to think about it is this shoe is, and I'll put it in air quotes, just $180 US, which is not a small amount of money, but compared to some of the other super shoes that are out there, the marathon super shoes, it's quite a bit cheaper. And so 
I think that some of the price concerns in using this kind of shoe on a somewhat regular basis, like for all your workouts and your road races, I think is very doable, especially because of the fact that I actually think that this shoe doesn't do all that bad at your recovery paces or your warm up and cool down paces. So it's like a shoe that really can be used for workouts like today where there's a long warm up, a big workout in the middle, and then a moderate to longer cool down at the end. This shoe I think really fits the bill. And then for your daily training, I really think that it should come down to the SL20. I think that if you're racing 5K, 10Ks, then I think that you're probably also gonna love the SL20 for your everyday runs and even for your longer easy runs. I feel like this is gonna be a really good pairing. This shoe is pretty much always on sale, so it's easy to pick up. And at 180, I feel like you're getting a pretty good value in terms of what this shoe can really provide for you 5K and 10K road racers out there. And to bring it back to marathon racing for just a moment, I will say, while I think that the Adios Pro 2 is exceptionally well suited for marathon running and even half marathon racing as well, I do think that possibly the most fun shoes in the Adidas lineup right now are the Takumi Sen 8 and the Primax. So those are my thoughts on the Takumi Sene and a lot of the rest of the Adidas lineup right now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or better yet, stop by the live stream I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'll post a link to the live stream channel in the description down below. Before I go, I do wanna talk about the Cherry Runner of the Week. This week, it's Joshua Krask who's gonna be running the Chicago Marathon to raise money and awareness for Casa of Cook County, which is a nonprofit that pairs volunteers with kids in the foster care system to make sure that no matter what happens to these kids or where they go throughout the system, that someone has a pair of eyes on them to make sure that they're being well taken care of. And Joshua is a foster dad himself, so this is a charity that is near and dear to his heart. I was happy to donate $100 of my money to his cause, and I would love it if you would consider donating even a minimum amount to help support a fellow runner. If you want to be the Charity Runner of the Week, send me an email with the subject of Charity Runner of the Week and send me a link to your fundraiser raising page so I can add you to my list. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?